Hey everybody, it's Jim here. A few months ago, a viewer sent me a rather interesting guitar to check out. It was a Fender Custom Shack Telecaster. Really, it was a Squire Bullet that had some budget level electrical upgrades as well as the Squire logo sanded off of the headstock and replaced with a Fender one. I wasn't sure what I wanted to do with this guitar for a little bit. I thought it over and I came to the decision that we are going to modify this guitar a little bit further, maybe more up my alley, as well as try some things that I have never done before, starting today with dyeing a neck. The neck on this guitar is a laurel neck, and I don't really care for the way it looks or the way that it feels, so why not try and darken it up and maybe alter the feel ever so slightly, if that does happen. All right, so we've never done this before. We'll see how this works out. One tip I did learn from other people who have done this, before you even open up the feeblings, which comes with the applicator, I really like that, uh, you want to have your gloves on first because this die will come straight off as soon as you remove the cap and get on your fingers. You don't want that. Let's shake it up. I have already hit this with 400 grit. And it's a little bit of paint thinner. Looks a little chalky. I have some before shots. I tried to take in the sun, not the best light in here, and don't have all the electricity I need in order to get this properly lit up and mic'd up and all that fun stuff. So camera quality and video quality and audio quality rather might not be as good as we're used to, but should work for what we're trying to do today. All right, very careful. All right, as you can see, we already had some on me. But that's why I said you wear the gloves. I'm going to throw this out a little bit at a time. Now, I'm not worried about the nut at all because the odds are I'm gonna replace this nut anyway. So I don't really per se care about getting the nut um, damaged. Well, not damaged, but colored. And we're also being extra brave. I'm gonna try and die because of that behind the nut as well. Now this applicator is pretty cool. And yeah, we'll just See how we do here. And look, just from the first coat, or the first dip, I'm able to coat this much of it, which is wonderful, because we're not going to be wasting a lot of this. On top of the fact that, you know, this should be a little bit of a nicer application. Also, I don't care if it goes through to the back because this is an unfinished back and I have other plans for this neck. So what I was thinking of potentially doing here is removing this finish anyways, anything that bleeds out from the bottom here. And what we'll do is we will use some true oil and with the true oil that should give us a good feel for the neck on the back of it. But as you can see here, this is this is drastic already. What we're gonna do is just try and get any little hairs off. All right, looking good. Let's let this dry for a little bit and we shall return. All right, I gotta say, this black India ink uh, I had really, really darkened up the fingerboard. I just hit it with some uh, F1 oil. Now, some of this came out really good. Some of it came out pretty horrible, uh, honestly. But I'm going to show you the highlights. The highlights are, first of all, it absolutely got rid of some of that laurel. We'll try and we'll try and show it in the sunlight in a second. But Things to note, because I tried to do the side, this came out terribly. I think it did at least. 
Um, the top, we have the same issues, especially bad in this corner. That must not have been taped down enough. Uh, we got a little bleed there, a little bleed there. But as a first time ever doing this, I don't really care. Um, kind of standpoint, eh, whatever. Actual fretboard. See, and this is how screwed up I am. I'd rather have all these other flaws but have the fretboard not have that terrible laurel than um, the other way around. <laughs> so, I'll take it. And this is how it ended up. I actually think I did a pretty decent job considering that I'd never done this before, but I did have to take a few other steps from when you last saw this in the garage. First of all, uh, the dots were not visible at all. The black India ink, it was pretty caked on there. What I ended up doing was using a pencil eraser and very slowly and very carefully um, just getting rid of the ink and it actually did a pretty admirable job. The next thing that I did was I used some of the scotch bright green pads with a tiny little bit of rubbing alcohol on them to kind of clean up a lot of the excess dripping or spills that were happening from the actual ink. And then also I had to do the same thing at the top here, but as a whole, it's really clean. Last but not least, I did take a little bit of sandpaper and just kind of remove the black off of that. When it came to the frets, it came right off. So that's not something that I had to worry about as I had assumed. So as a whole here, I have to say, I'm not too dissatisfied with this. Is this something that I would say is worth your time, worth your effort? That's gonna be in the eye of the beholder. I personally think that even this kind of amateur job on this, it looks a whole hell of a lot better than the original Laurel did. Whether or not it's going to feel any better, we won't know until we have the guitar fully reassembled and we'll have to decide from there on out. But aesthetically, this is a bit of an upgrade for me. And it's something that you really could do. Again, big pieces of advice if you're going to be doing this. Make sure you have your gloves on before you get started, before you even unscrew the cap to the leather die, because as we saw what happened to me and what I knew could happen, the die is going to spill out and you don't want that on your hands. It is not fun to get that off. Use decent sized rubber gloves and you should be pretty good when it comes to that. Second of all, uh, make sure that when you're taping it, I tried to use one piece of tape all the way around the edges of the neck itself. That's the best way to do it. I've heard from other people and make sure you're pressing down really hard so that there isn't space in between for as much to bleed through. Another way to make sure that not a lot will bleed through, go slowly. However much ink you plan on using, cut it down to like a fourth. As you could see when we were first applying it, the first kind of little dip I did into the bottle, it went for the first like three and a half frets. And sometimes I've watched other people on YouTube and they dump like a glob on every single fret and the thing ends up a mess. Well, yeah, that's why this feebling stuff is no joke and a little bit does go a long way. This is how the guitar sits now. I'm going to need you guys to leave me a comment. I'm going to do whatever you guys vote on here with the electronics. You got two options. We can either do a P90 in the neck, or we could do two single coil pickups, and maybe we do something with phase or some sort of uh, series parallel kind of push-pull. Just something different, something fun that I normally wouldn't wire up. The choice is up to you. So please leave me a comment. I really will go with whichever decision that you guys vote for the most down below. That's all we have for today though. We will obviously be seeing this guitar again. Let me know, how do you think that this came out? Would you be happy with this if this was your first time? Have you done this before? And do you have any tips for anybody else who is going to make this kind of modification? I'm always looking forward to seeing what you guys have to say down below. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to tell somebody in your life that you love, that you do love them, and have a great rest of your day. Take care, everybody.